a demo of Boomi's NetSuite to Shopify uh, ready-made bundle. I will demonstrate installing the bundle, configuring a couple of the processes for syncing items and inventory levels, and uh, detail some of the different components that make up each of the flows. So without further ado, let's get going. The first thing you need to do is head over to discover.boomi.com, find the Shopify NetSuite tile and install it into your account. You'll be asked to provide a an account uh, ID and once that's done you can go ahead and install that into the account. I have prepared a couple of test inventory items that we will be syncing. So we have a saved search that will filter on these test items. So right now it's just three items, they're tennis rackets and we will be syncing these items along with their inventory levels in the test. So if we head over to Boomi and refresh, we should see the Shopify bundle installed. There it is. And so let's dive into the first process. Process is essentially uh, a workflow for syncing NetSuite items to Shopify in this case. So as you can see, every process is made up of a number of shapes. And one of the most prominent shapes is the process call shape. This uh, allows you to, to run uh, a sequence of tasks in a child process that Boomi spins up independently, does the work and returns some values that could be manipulated in the rest of the main thread. So the item flow consists of uh, two sub processes and just a small check at the end to see uh, if the process was successful. But if we, if we jump into the first sub process in the item flow, the main work that's being done here is uh, in this connector shape. This connector allows you to connect to uh, an API such as that of NetSuite. It gives you the ability to perform an action. In this case, we're going to do a query by saved search. And so this is why I have set up this saved search, which essentially will filter on the items that we want to sync to our Shopify account. So one of the first things we need to do is pass the saved search script ID as a parameter to this connector shape. So this, this has already been set up in the Boomi bundle. We just need to specify the ID of the search that should be used to export the items. So once that's done, the next thing we should do is actually configure the columns that we want to retrieve from this request. And so yeah, we can include the price display name is already there so so these are these are pre-selected from from the bundle configuration i'm just going to remove these custom fields as they don't currently exist in my netsuite test account and so that would cause the query to fail so we're just going to sync three or four fields into shopify and so that should be sufficient for now so we set we instruct the connector shape, which saved search to use, which columns to export. And uh, the next thing we need to do, uh, as you can see here, this is a map shape. This is one of Boomi's um, facilities for transforming um, records from one, let's say, profile or one form to another. So mapping, mapping from one uh, source profile to, to a destination profile. In this case, we're using an intermediary um, XML profile called uh, canonical items. This is just uh, an in-between step from the NetSuite export uh, to the destination Shopify uh, product upset. So as soon as we fetch the 
the items, including the columns that we checked, we then map those into this uh, XML, let's say, temporary profile. I just need to switch the XML profile to one that is 2017.2, since that is the, the namespace that, that we are using in our connection. And we need to map a few fields. So most importantly, we can map the SKU. We can say, let's map the base price over to the cost price and it would be nice to include the description of the item so let's leave it at that and save the mapping so at this stage we could actually go ahead and test this sub process in isolation so although it is part of a, a let's say higher process then you could also test this uh, process in isolation to see if your safe search and mapping is working as expected and that's one thing that i really like about Bumi. so but before that we need to set up the connection to netsuite and so this is done using the regular integration record you need to set up uh, an integration record inside netsuite with token-based authentication and grab the consumer key, consumer secret, token ID, token secret, and also the application ID that NetSuite assigns to this integration record. And we also need the account ID, which you can grab from the URL. just remember to use an underscore and test the connection so that is fine we can save the connection and at this stage we should be in a good position to test this uh, NetSuite item fetch Once that's running, I'll go ahead and, and configure the Shopify uh, connection as we will need it in a second. So similarly, you need to specify the shop ID in the URL and you can use an access token that's generated when you create a custom app for API connectivity. You first need to configure the access scope. I've just uh, included all, all rights. And this is the access token that you need, which is only viewable upon creation. And so you should save it somewhere. And we can test this connection as well. That's fine. We'll save that. And back to the query items flow. So it seems to have completed successfully. And through click on, clicking on the last step, you can see actually what's being returned to the parent process. So there are three records. And you can see that this is the XML, the canonical item XML profile, which we have mapped to. going one stage before and hitting on the map shape. Just one second, I need to reconnect my microphone. So one step before in the map shape, then you would see the essentially the saved search export uh, before it was actually mapped. So this is something that I really like about Boomi. At every step of the way, you can inspect the structure of, of the objects you're working with and how they're being man manipulated from one step to another which is which is very very uh, handy indeed 
So back to the main process. Those items would be passed along the rest of the process and then we come to the Shopify upset. So we fetch the NetSuite items and we then uh, post them to, to Shopify. You can see that again here we have an entry point, we're setting some environment variables which are not uh, super important for, for this case. We have a try catch which would obviously catch any any error that that happens along the way and you could handle it in, in the catch block and we're using a branch shape this is essentially executing every action that you list in sequence so the first one is this sub process again where we ping Shopify for the entire product catalog and save them to a temporary store in, in Boomi, we'll see why in a second. And the second one is, is uh, a, dec a decision shape, which gives you the ability to evaluate a condition and branch off based on whether that condition was true or false. So in step one of this branch, we're running another process, which has a connector shape as we had before to NetSuite, this time to Shopify, it's also running a query on the product type, mapping the results of that query to a an XML profile, which we then actually dump to a cache. And this is done to determine whether the items that we are actually pulling from NetSuite already exist in Shopify at the time that the sync is running. If that is the case, then the true um, branch would be executed and we would perform an update instead of a create. If the items that were exported do not exist in Shopify, then we would proceed with the false branch and actually run a product create. So in this process, the only thing which we need to tweak to this ready-made bundle is in this final step so once we so we map actually the we map the canonical product which we mapped uh, to in the previous step to the shopify profile so this shopify product creates request so that's all already and done for you we have the connector which performs the upset and then we have one final step, which is mapping the Shopify response to another um, canonical profile, including some status fields and so forth. In this one, we need to tweak the Shopify dates that are being returned, namely the created at and the updated at dates. Shopify re re returns them in a specific format, and we need to change that format to, to one that Boomi is fine with. So typically you could just go ahead and run a date format operation. That's a, a one-time operation. However, this is something that we would need to reuse. So you could create your own function actually, say something like Shopify date formatter. This takes an input, which would be our Shopify response date field. And it runs some logic on that input and then exposes the result as, a, as an output so what you could do in between is plenty in our case we just want to format the date and boomi allows you to specify an input string representing the format of the input date this is what's returned by Shopify in the response, and then we want to format it in this format. So we run our input date through that and hook up the formatted date to our output. We save that, and now we just run our date fields through this function. We need to add another one because we have two dates and we do the same for the created at date.
and that should be that for this process. So let's go ahead and test it. So that has finished successfully. You could see that we have three items now in Shopify. They have zero stock because we're just syncing the item record. And there are the fields that we specified, namely the SKU, the description, and the base price.